Chapter Two of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Two The Gazelle. Shall I help? asked Solomon. Yes, indeed. Take the seeds in the skirts of your coat and come along, was the answer. Solomon and Esther were visiting some friends in a village near Jerusalem. It was the month of December, and the time to plant the crops in Palestine. After we have scattered the grain, Solomon's friend Levi said, the camel shall help us plough the ground. Then the seed will take care of itself. It did not surprise Solomon to hear of a camel drawing a plough. Levi's camel was as useful to him as horses are to farmers in America. Solomon and Esther had been at their friends many times when the great, slow, clumsy animal helped his master about the farm and garden. "'He isn't handsome, but I love the dear old fellow,' said Levi. "'He is more patient than most camels. I know he is slow beside some of his fellows, but he cannot help that.' Levi stroked the camel's head. "'There, see? He likes to have me notice him as well as my new pet.' The camel bent his head down toward his master, with a look that said as plainly as words, "'I love you, master, for you are kind to me.' "'What is the new pet, Levi?' asked Solomon. "'When I get through my sewing, you may go into the house and call Esther. Then you two shall see it together.' Solomon could hardly wait for Levi to finish his work, but at last the seeds were all scattered. "'I won't go at the ploughing just yet. I am tired, and it is warm. We will rest a while. I know you are anxious to find out what I have to show you. I got it for my wife, Rebecca.' Levi was a young man, and had been married only a short time. He was very fond of his pretty wife, and liked to have surprises for her. He led the way to the house where Esther was talking with Rebecca. "'Solomon wishes to see our new pet,' he said. "'Have you told Esther about it?' "'Not yet. We will all go together,' answered the young Jewess. They went out to the stable, and Levi pointed to a bed of straw over in the corner. There something lay curled up and sound asleep. "'It's a gazelle! Oh, what a beauty!' cried Esther. "'It's only a baby still.' "'I never saw such a little one before,' said Solomon. "'May I take it up in my arms?' The gazelle waked up at the sound of voices. It opened its soft, dark eyes with a frightened look. "'It is very shy,' said Rebecca. "'But we pet it so much it will soon get over its fear. You children ought to see it run and frolic with me.' "'Here, little one, come and eat,' said the gazelle's mistress, in a low, sweet voice. It sprang up and started toward Rebecca, but when it had come half-way it became frightened again at the sight of the visitors. The food looked too tempting, however, and it came to Rebecca's side. "'I believe no other animal has as beautiful eyes as the gazelle. It is certainly the most graceful of all creatures,' said Levi. "'See how white its breast is,' said Esther. "'The dear little thing! Mayn't I hold it for just a minute?' "'Certainly, dear.' Rebecca was very fond of Esther and her brother. She loved to have them visit her. She picked up the gazelle and put it in the little girl's lap as soon as she had seated herself on a pile of straw. Esther patted the gazelle tenderly. "'It is better than any doll. I wish I had one of my own. I should love it dearly.' "'I cannot stop any longer now,' said Levi. "'My old camel is wondering why I don't go to work. Are you coming with me, Solomon?' "'Of course I am,' answered the boy, and the two started for the field.' "'What shall we do with ourselves?' asked Rebecca, when she and Esther had been left alone. "'Oh, I know what you would like,' she went on. "'We will go over into our neighbor's orchard. He is gathering olives, and we will watch him.' "'I would like that ever so much,' answered her little visitor. It took them only a few minutes to get to the olive orchard. The owner and his sons were beating the branches with long sticks, and knocking off the fruit to the ground.' Two women were busily at work gathering the olives in baskets. As soon as a basket was filled, it was carried away and emptied, and then brought back to be filled again. 
It was surprising how quickly the women gathered their loads. Then away they would step with their baskets on their heads, walking as easily and gracefully as though they were free of all burdens whatever. "'Come on and help us,' they cried to Rebecca and Esther. "'The more at work, the merrier we shall be. There are two empty baskets under that tree.' The visitors were soon busy trying to see if they could fill their baskets as quickly as the others did. "'I am not tempted to eat the olives,' said Esther. "'They are too bitter, but I am very fond of them after they are pickled.' "'So are we all,' answered one of the women. "'I don't know how we should get along without olives and the oil we make from them.' "'They say the Christians not only eat that unclean animal, the pig, but they also use its fat for cooking.' "'Just as we use olive oil,' said Rebecca. "'Ugh! What a horrid idea! "'I should be afraid to eat anything in the house of a Christian "'for fear of being poisoned,' cried Esther. "'Mama has told me they sometimes die of diseases we Hebrews never have. "'It is probably because they eat pork and use lard.' "'No doubt of it, Esther,' answered Rebecca. "'It is a wise law of our religion that forbids us to eat any food obtained from the hog.' We must not stop to talk too much, though. See, our friends are getting ahead of us. Nothing more was said for some time. It is surprising how quickly we finished, said one of the women to Rebecca as the last basket was emptied. It is because our friends gave us so much help. Won't you come to the house with us now and have a luncheon? No, thank you, answered Rebecca. It is nearly supper time, and I must go home and do some cooking. "'I am anxious to see the dear little gazelle again,' said Esther. "'As she walked back to her friend's house, "'Rebecca told her stories about wild gazelles. "'They like to keep together,' she said. "'They are very fond of each other's company. "'While they are feeding, one of them stands on guard "'to see if any enemies are stealing upon them. "'If he hears a sound that means danger, "'he gives the alarm, and away the flock flees like the wind.' "'I have often heard father speak of being as fleet as a gazelle,' said Esther. "'But what are its worst enemies?' "'The lion and the leopard, I suppose. "'Poor little creature. "'If a lion takes it by surprise, there is little hope for its life. "'Its only chance is in flight. "'There are times when less dangerous animals come upon a herd of gazelles, "'and then they make a stand to defend themselves. "'They gather in a close mass, with the mothers and little ones in the center. The males make a ring on the outside, pointing their horns toward the enemy. "'Isn't it wonderful they should be so wise? How did you learn so much about gazelles, Rebecca?' "'Levi told me. But I must hurry now to get supper. We are going to have something nice.' Rebecca was a good cook. Although Esther was quite hungry from being out of doors so much, it did not seem very long before a roast goose and a dish of onions were steaming on the supper-table.' "'It is ready just in time, Levi,' said his wife, as her husband and Solomon came into the house. "'I am quite tired, but the smell of the supper is enough to make me forget all about it. Tired as I was, though, I stopped to feed my faithful camel.' "'How old is he?' asked Solomon. "'My father had him before he was six months old, and that was twenty years ago. I was a little fellow, just toddling about then. So, you see, the camel and I grew up together.' "'It is no wonder you love him, Levi,' said Solomon. "'I don't believe I ever saw a baby camel.' "'Isn't it hard work training a camel to obey you and to kneel at your command?' "'Father said he had to use a great deal of patience at first. "'The camel kicked and fought and grumbled before he could be made to bend his knees. "'Even now he scolds a good deal about obeying, as you children know.' "'Esther and I saw a camp of Bedouins on our way here,' said Solomon. They were tending a flock of beautiful sheep. One of the shepherds was holding a newborn lamb in his bosom. "'Those fierce Bedouins are tender to their flocks, but cruel to men,' said Levi. "'You cannot trust them for a moment. They look down upon us village people, but in our hearts we scorn them.' "'They are dreadful thieves,' said Rebecca. "'When I was up in Jerusalem the other day, I heard a story about a Bedouin woman who went last summer into a rich man's garden.' The owner of the place was just coming into the entrance when he met the woman with a basket of lettuce on her head. She was a relation of one of his servants. He stopped and asked her several questions about her errand there. 
She told him she had just been to his place to try to sell her lettuce, but she could not do it, as the garden contained all his family could use. The gentleman supposed she was telling the truth. What was his surprise, then, when he found out after she was safe out of sight that the woman had stolen every head of lettuce out of his garden? "'It is just like the deceitful creatures,' said Levi. "'I dislike the sight of them.' "'Are you going to have much honey this year?' asked Solomon. "'Yes, I have several swarms of bees, and I hope they will do well.' "'It won't be long before we shall have some fresh honey,' said Rebecca. "'Then you children must pay us another visit, for I know you like sweet things.' "'I wish we didn't need to go home to-morrow, but Mother said we mustn't stay here any longer this time. By and by, though, there will be more wild flowers to pick, and I had rather be here then. I love to get big bunches of tulips and poppies, and trim the house with them. "'How many red flowers we have here in Palestine,' said Rebecca." She did not know that Christian travellers from other parts of the world speak of them as the Saviour's blood drops. They are sure to notice the fields dotted with brilliant scarlet flowers. "'Do you want me to tell you a story of King Solomon?' asked Levi. "'Your speaking of the honey and the flowers put it into my mind.' "'Of course we do,' said both children. "'Very well, then. It is about the visit of the Queen of Sheba with her generals and armies.' As she approached, the great king received her sitting on his throne in that wondrous palace, of which you have heard so much. "'Is he as wise as people say?' the queen said to her attendants. "'I will find this out for myself.' Now it happened that her subjects were noted for their skill in making artificial flowers. Those who made it their business to study flowers could not tell the difference between real ones and these imitation ones. They were so perfect.' The queen decided to test King Solomon's wisdom in this matter. She ordered two beautiful wreaths to be prepared. One was to be made of real flowers, and the other of artificial ones. Taking the two wreaths in her hands, she presented herself before the king. "'Choose one of these for yourself,' she said. There seemed to be no choice as to which he would take, although he looked at them closely. But his wise mind told him there must be some difference." The birds and insects could tell him which one to take. He looked out of a window, and saw honey-bees in the garden below. Then he knew what to do. He ordered the window to be opened. The breeze carried the odor of the flowers out to the bees, and they came flying into the room. You can easily guess they alighted on the wreath of real flowers. The artificial ones did not attract them in the least. Then Solomon spoke. "'The bees have told me which wreath to choose,' he said." "'The Queen of Sheba found out that the king was truly wise, didn't she?' said Solomon. "'Yes, Solomon, and you who are named for him should always remember what the Queen of Sheba learned, that there is one thing worth more than riches or beauty.' "'And that is wisdom,' said Rebecca softly. End of chapter 2, read by Kara Schallenberg, www.kray.org, on Friday, September twentieth, two 2013, in San Diego, California.